Hopper TV coming to you from Kansas City, Missouri. Not the Kansas side of Kansas City, but the Kansas City, Missouri side. All right, we are on Main Street here. So just some quick facts about Kansas City. There's about 2.3 million people in the metro area. It's the 31st largest metropolitan population in the country. So here's Main Street. That way, towards the river, the Missouri River, uh, the actual city itself has around 450,000 people in Kansas City, but if you include Overland Park and some of the other suburbs, you're over 2.3 million. Home to the Kansas City Chiefs and the Kansas City Royals, no basketball team and no hockey team. Let's keep cruising. Hey, there's the Midland Theater. We're on 13th now. So the further south you go, the numbers keep getting higher. The closer to the Missouri River that you get, the lower the numbers go. Oh, we got the tram. There it is. I think I'll try and take that to the market. It's a good way to get around. I'm liking it. There's the convention center, which is right by my hotel. B and B Main Street. Here we go. That's actually the T-Mobile Sprint Center or something like that. They do concerts over there. Let's see what it looks like down there. The Kill Devil Club. Bristol seafood and steak. Look at all these tulips. Obviously, it's early morning. It's about 11 a.m. So, this is a nightlife area that you'll come to, which is really nice. You know, Kansas City is a beautiful place. A lot of these tours I'm doing are in the early morning hours, so people think if they don't see people out there, they're dead. But obviously these establishments wouldn't be in business if they didn't get people coming here. So you gotta, you gotta basically imagine what it would look like during an event or something like that. Instead of just assuming that no one comes out to the Country Road Ice House. <laughs> At 11 in the morning. It's like, <laughs> you know, places are barely opening up. The reason I do it in the daytime is because that's how my travel schedule works. Plus, my camera works better in the daytime instead of at night. You can see more clear what's out there. By the way, guys, thanks to everyone who's been subscribing to this channel and keeping up with us because without you, none of this would be possible to keep giving these tours to people. So thank you to everyone who's been subscribing and liking the videos. So here's the T-Mobile Center. I thought it said Sprint on the roof. I was looking on Google Maps. It said Sprint on there and I was like, that makes no sense. T-Mobile Sprint, but this is Grand Boulevard. Beautiful arena. You almost think they were gonna bring a pro basketball team here, but it'd definitely be like a smaller market. The thing I noticed about St. Louis in Kansas City, their culture does revolve around their uh, pro sports clubs. So they get a really loyal fan base out here. Some would say it's because, well, there's nothing really to do out here but go to the games. It's kind of true, but not really. They just do things a little bit different, like what they value is different. Especially food. Food is a big. You got pokey ramen. You got some unique club right there called Temptations Cigar Box. All right, I'm headed back towards Maine off of Grand Boulevard now. Some history for you. Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Paul Railroad Freight House. 
That's why one of the best railroad stations in the country is right here. All right, here we are at the National World War I Museum and Memorial right here in downtown. There's the Memorial Hall. Now we're gonna go head down towards Union Station, which is actually where I arrived last night while the storm was happening. They say it's one of the best Amtrak stations in the country. I don't think it's better than uh, Chicago or New York, I should say. Even Philadelphia, it's comparable to Philadelphia. Maybe a little bit better than Philly, actually. Hey, we finally got a fountain down here. Check out this fountain. It looks like it shuts off, turns off, and then turns on. Right there in front of Union Station. Kansas City is known for its fountains. By the way, in case you're wondering what the nickname of Kansas City is, it is KC, the initials. <laughs> KC, Kansas City. Literally on the other side of the river, or not necessarily the other side of the river, but just that way is Kansas. Kansas City, Kansas is actually the third largest city in Kansas. Kansas City, Missouri is the second largest city in Missouri behind St. Louis. Well, I was riding the Amtrak in from St. Louis. It was a beautiful ride. I was impressed, especially just outside of St. Louis. Like the the land west of St. Louis is incredibly beautiful. I mean, that's the Korea Korean War Veterans Memorial. Actually, last time I was in Kansas City, there was a lot more people in this common area than there is right now. There's a statue there. Valley Forge. I believe that's George Washington, isn't it? I'm amazed at the condition of this park. This was actually in much better condition last time I was here. Anyway, we're on Pershing and Grand Boulevard. There's Crown Plaza. Last time I was there, it was a really nice place. So we'll see if it still is. That was seven years ago. More of those fountains. See fountains over here on this side as well. Kansas City has a lot of fountains. You guys remember correctly, the Kansas City Royals had a big fountain in the, in the uh, outfield. There's the Sea Life Aquarium, by the way. Looks like Hallmark cards. They've been replaced by Instagram, probably. All right. So, we'll go ahead and go in here. Crown Center. Just kind of check out this little mall. Like I said, last time I was here, it was kind of cool. It was hot last time I was here. I was here in the middle of the summer, like August. Very hot and humid. Oh, it's just like any other mall. I mean, once you've seen one mall, you've seen them all. It seemed like there was something cool in here, though. Let's see if I can remember what it was. Fritz? Oh, maybe, no, not Fritz. You know Kansas City barbecue is popular. That smelled like barbecue at Fritz's. Burgers, fries, milkshakes, grilled chicken. The Cottery, live theater for all ages. Oh, this is typical American mall that's been basically built everywhere around the world, copying the same layout and format as these 1970s style malls. 
1970s America, before Amazon. Spin and go. Stop and get a beer. Spin and go. Here is the West End. I almost got a room here. Stayed in the West End in Indianapolis. It was gorgeous. This one's just as cool. But it's connected to the Crown Plaza, you see. Oh yeah, these indoor atriums. Cool, cool. This is the place where all the pilots go. Just go up and go back down. They got something for Tulane University going on here. It's a cool hotel. What other American cities do you guys want me to show you? I'm gonna be going back to the Caribbean, it looks like you guys wanna see that. But uh, I might be going back to some of the Pacific Northwest in California. All right, from here we go to City Market towards the Missouri River. basically two downtowns in Kansas City. The one we're at right now around Crown Plaza and Union Station where the World War I Museum and then the one where I'm staying where the Marriott is just north of the river. So there's like two downtown areas. The higher buildings are over where the Missouri the river is in that direction which is where we're headed now to the city market just there on the shore. You can see they have these uh, indoor walking paths which work really great in the winter and in the summer. Kansas City is a much more beautiful place when the sun comes out. I'll say that right now. For sure. All right, we have made it to City Market. We're gonna go explore around here. You can see we've got Fifth Street and Walnut, thanks to my uh, Uber or Lyft driver Chandler there. He gave me a lot of advice on Kansas City The Sprint T-Mobile Center the reason it's called Sprint T-Mobile is because T-Mobile bought Sprint But he said there's gonna be a big concert there and down in that power and light district Every time there's an event or a concert that place just lights up with tons of energy and people Let's See what they got in this market here Some art some honey bee wax, tulips. Italian. Some hoagies. Some barbecue. Man, this is the place to go, huh? On the weekend, I think. I know you guys want me to stop and get some food. Kind of reminds me of Pike's Market in Seattle. Burritos. It's a great market, huh? All right, let's go see what's up with the Arabia Steamboat. It's a big old 
go down here and see what they got down here. I don't even know what this Steamboat Arabia was, but we're about to find out. So from what I understood is this uh, Steamboat Arabia sunk in about 1850s or 1840s. You can see right here, just pause it. See if I can get you a good view so you can read. But basically 1856 hit a log snag sunk but the Missouri River the Mississippi River they, they were the original highways the super highways before we had cars the river system was the super highways of America and these river boats were how people got around and here's a look at some of the treasure that was found this China But what they were really after was the 400 barrels of Kentucky bourbon. They said the bourbon was still good after 150 years. Even the pickles you could still eat, they were sweet. Wow. So look at these brass scales. Wow, was all this found on board? That was a heck of a recovery, salvage. Yeah, this is a good history museum. So the boat was uh, headed to Omaha and Sioux Falls. Amazing era. Wow. All of this found on there. Man, that was a great recovery that they did. Look at the view from the above the uh, excavation. It was over 100 feet down in the sediment, a half a mile off the current shoreline for the Missouri because the Missouri changed course. Just a look at the bow. It was buried for almost 150 years. What do you guys say we uh, ride this train? I think this train is going uptown. So it's free. Freebie. That was the tram that I was on that was free, by the way. It just basically does a big loop around the downtown from the north to the south. It works. It's functional. It's good. Can't believe it's free. They stop. They make a lot of stops, though. I think I'm headed towards a restaurant that I saw on Google Maps. So we are back in the famous Power and Light District. This is the nighttime area. There we go. Cowboys Barbecue. It says it's open. Let's go in there. All right. So, we got a beer, a lager, with some burn ends, some cheesy potatoes, some beans, and some side sauce. Let's do it. We're here at Who Boys. I think it's called that. Plowboys. Right here near Power and Light. Yeah, so I really like Kansas City. I would say it's a 24 to 48 hour city. Probably 48 hours, really. So you can see some of the museums. We didn't go to the plaza, which is on the south side. So if you get a chance, check out that shopping area if you're here for shopping. What a great city. It's like a... Yeah, it's probably the best Midwestern city that I've seen. All right, guys, that's going to conclude this episode of Island Hopper TV right here from Kansas City. Really cool city.